the Lord will always be your guide. It will give you plenty to eat even when the ground is dry. It will make your body strong. You will be like a garden that has plenty of water. You will be like a spring of water that never becomes dry. Isaiah 58, 11. Hey guys, so good to hear. If you are new, welcome to the family. Please don't make it your last time. Just make sure you subscribe, like, share, comment, do the needful. And if you're an old OG, you know I love you. Again, it's so good to be here. Um, so in today's video, I'm going to be talking about five ways I've been consistent with God this year. If you can remember last year, I I was always saying I did not like my relationship with God. It was all over the place. It just felt very off. It just felt like the fire had died. So I'm like, okay, this year I made a top priority that I'm going to make my relationship got better this year. It's actually, it was actually in my goals for this year. Anyways, not to digress too much. I have, if you see me looking off the camera, obviously I know I'm kind of camera rusher, but I think I'm getting better. Yeah. Um, I put my system is here. I put something else there so that I can not digress too much i've written five points down that i want to talk to you guys about um or share with you guys so i don't digress and i don't want this video to be too long so i'm just going to be looking capish <laughs> anywho so um let's dive right into the video um i'm going to be sharing five things or five ways i've been consistent we got this year and the first on the list is serving in the book of second timothy 2 20 it says but in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but only of wood, but also of wood and of earth, and some of honor and some of dishonor. So that is the verse, Second Timothy 2.20. It is also important to know that with that verse, it is showing that it's important to know that God is not looking for the perfect vessel. God is looking for the person or a vessel that will come and be like, oh God, here I am, serve me. A seven in the house of the Lord, a seven in church has helped me, has kept me in check, to be honest, because I now, I'm not very aware of the fact that I'm, I'm, how will I put the word? I don't say I'm out there, but it's just, I know that, okay, it, it checks my motive, like, okay, this thing you're doing, is it good? Then you now come to the house of the Lord and now come and serve. It's like, it convinces me, like, this action you're about to take, these words you're about to say, Kobosira, like, it's not good. So, don't do that. Um, I'm more aware of the fact that um, service and worshipping God is outside church. That's what service is serving in church has done me. Like, I'm like, okay, it's not only on Sundays or Wednesdays for midweek service that I'm serving. And I'm not aware of the fact that every day of my life, wherever I find myself, I am serving. It might not be big. I might not be welcoming guests like I do when I'm in church, but at least my words, my action, because I am the first church people see before they get into the church. I am like the first Bible people see before they read the Bible. So I am more aware of the fact that my worship or my service is more than the church. It's after the church, is outside the church. Service has also made it easier for me to go to church regularly. Since COVID, even before COVID, I've been an online member. Like, I'm the kind of person that you will see saying, oh, I'd rather wear my pajamas, stay in front of my system or the, or the TV and catch up on um, service online. But like, serving in church is, uh, serving in church may be good. And there is this homely feeling, this fellowship feeling when it comes to being in church physically. And yeah, let's move to the second one. The second one is fasting. So Psalm 69 verse 10 says, when I wept and humbled my soul with fasting, it became my reproach. Actually, when you fast, you, you, you it's not you tend to, you trust God on a deeper level because now you're killing the flesh and you're working with the spirit, you know? So when you're hungry, when you catch yourself being hungry and you're fasting, you just know that or more, <laughs> nah, 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 I'm not supposed to break this. I am supposed to pray so you pray at that time you study the word now you're feeling your spirit man you're not feeling the flesh you kill the flesh you let the flesh die so that you can enable the spirit with fasting your spirit is sharpened your eyes are open your ears are alert like for me now i've made it a habit to or a habit is it a habit or an habit anyone you get the drift to fast consistently specific days of the week yeah if you're just starting you can just start with once a week maybe if your church has 
it has a culture of fasting in a, on a particular day you can just go with it for my church now the elevation church which as a church we fast every wednesdays apart from the other general fast that can be announced later on but consistently for the year we fast every wednesday so if you if you if you're just starting your faith journey you can start you can start with that or you for, or you can add another day to it if you want to just increase your capacity that has helped that's also helped me to um, build my faith and my trust in god fasting helps a lot like if i don't want to say fasting is like a bribery method like oh if you want something sharp sharp fast but like even if you want something sharp, sharp and you fast and you're not getting at that point you are reproach the way you you answer to that thing the way you you approach that thing is not fast, different do you get what i'm saying fasting just humbles you do you get to just be like god it is you you will lean not on your understanding and just lean on the power of god on the you just tap into your faith with god and the next one is having a community now ecclesiastes 4 9 says two are better than one for if one falls the other is dead to lift him up now in this christian journey here yeah, you cannot do it alone i will never lie to you guys you can't do you can't say it's only me 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 that's one of the reasons you go to church that's one of the reasons you have to serve because now when you serve you will now automatically become belong into a family do you get what i'm saying you not automatically belong into a family that would watch out for you pray for you encourage you give you gifts when it's your birthday pray for you you know that kind of situation or you have friends that that you want like okay let's have a group i have a group of friends where we, we meet every mondays and no wednesdays and saturdays on wednesdays we use it to just about the week how our spirits were sharpened we do a little bible study of what we've learned in the word for the week so far and on saturdays we just use it to pray sometimes we even do everything at once pray just catch up what the word has told us you know everything is done in it it's just so that your your faith is strengthened when you are tired when you when you're weak to pray you have somebody there to help you you can be vulnerable sometimes yeah you could be scared but that's why you pray about it i'm like god i need my own set of friends because i need prayer about it. i need my own set of friends to pray with you know to just tarry in your presence with it could be physically it could be online anyway anyhow you should just you should have that next on the list is intentionally saving what i listen to or what i see on social media whether we like it or not guys let's be honest let even the bible has said it here in proverbs 23 7 it says what a man taken to ticket ticket thinket in his heart so is he so basically what goes into your subconscious comes from what you listen to and what you read you know um then you start to act it out so for me i've made it my mission i think from when i took my faith journey seriously i think that was 2022 um i made it my mission to block unfollow even instagram has made it easier that that you can help somebody unfollow you i've made it like i made it my mission i block people from far away especially on twitter where you want to see people become banger boys become banger girls um be unkind with your words support rubbish once i see it from me Miley, you don't need to follow me once somebody has mistakenly brought you do and not the way Twitter is for you or following, once mistake Twitter mistakenly brought it to my bring it or brought it to my timeline, I'm blocking you. Like I don't want to entertain rubbish. Yeah, that is for reading, that is for seeing. Now for listening, I make sure that what I listen to is mostly gospel and clean. Now if you I'm not saying I'm perfect, sometimes I I listen to other Afrobeat songs that might not that are not too clean or they are not even clean at all. Let me be totally honest, they are not clean at all. But I'm quick to catch myself, and I and I can tell you guys for a fact that when you do this, like when you are act, when you are intentional about everything I must listen to is gospel songs or their clean lyrics. By the time you start listening to some secular songs, your ear, your spirit to start to irritate me. There was a time I was listening to um, a particular artist. In the in the office yeah i don't know what that just let me just not listen to christian podcast or listen to gospel songs let me just listen to nigerian secular songs as you know on this channel i love anything nigeria the nigerian entertainment industry gives me butterflies and he got to just the first verse i was like what is this who sent me like it was just very ugh. so i had to just stop and go back to base because i don't want to feed my spirit with rubbish 
you know and then once i see like i said on twitter or social media when i see things that get me angry or aggravated i just block i don't have shirt for nonsense um also remember that faith comes from hearing um I hear it through the word of Christ. That is where we didn't listen to Christian podcasts. Trust her, um, Christian podcast comes in play. For me, I listen to Mazino Malaka. You can rest here. I listen to her podcast a lot. It's so soothing. You can actually rest there. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, yeah. I listen to that. I listen to preachings from my pastor, preachings from other churches, you know, and you just, just to build my faith. Yeah. And the next one which is also the last one but certainly not the least but like these are the ways i've used is uh, spending time with god by studying and praying the word all the other four things i mentioned it cannot replace spending time with god you cannot say you're serving in god and then your actual relationship with god is in the gutter the is that sometimes you might not be consistent you might not feel like praying you might just not feel it but you have to cultivate that habit with god sometimes it's only god that beg you have in your spirit sometimes you just want to sit down in silence and be like <sighs> let us a deep sigh and be like god sees it god understands how you're feeling in as much as god sees your heart he also wants you to talk he also wants you to communicate with him he also wants you to have a proper relationship with him um sometimes like i said we don't feel like praying what i do it what when i don't feel like praying what i do in that situation most times is i just play worship songs or prayer chants spotify makes it easier like um before i shot this video now i didn't feel like praying last night all i just did was just set on spotify prayer chants playlist and so i'm using some for 11 hours you see for two hours sometimes i even play it and then i sleep off from there do you get while i am praying because sometimes when i don't feel like praying all i can just say it when i'm listening to worship songs or prayer chant is thank you jesus all i have in my heart is gratitude thank you jesus all i have in my heart is gratitude sometimes i slip off from there sometimes i'm spurred to pray in the spirit and then i start speaking in tongues it just happens like that you just have to just have to be disciplined and um create time to spend with god another hack that can help you is having a prayer journal sometimes i don't feel like speaking i know you i've told you guys so many times on this channel or maybe you see me do it I write in my prayer um, journal. I just write things out. Sometimes what I've heard in the spirit, sometimes what is really impressed in my heart early in the morning or in the night or randomly during the day or a particular verse or a word that must have been said during uh, when I'm listening to preachings or when I'm listening to podcasts or a verse in the Bible when I'm reading or something I just need. I just write. Sometimes I just want to rant and cry. I just put everything out in my prayer journal and that is it. So sometimes when I don't feel like praying, and I've written it. I will definitely have a prayer journal that I've been writing. And if you don't have, you can just start. And I just go flip through the pages, randomly flip through the pages of this um, prayer journal. And I'm just seeing, I'm just in awe. Sometimes I'm just like, God, how, where, when? I'm in awe of God's presence at that time, of God's love, of God's grace, His mercy. I can give an example. Earlier this year, I was praying. I was set to pray towards a certain direction. And I and that period, I was feeling down. I was feeling sad. Somebody just told me that the the eve to my birthday, like, open your prayer journal from 2022. It, I just opened a random page, and that page, that page. I remember in that page it was things I just heard in my spirit, prophecies I heard, and things I just randomly wrote. There was one thing I wrote that I can't remember thinking about it actively. I just wrote it. That's how I knew it was a prophecy because I can't remember actively sitting down and think about it. And I'm actually living in that answered prayer. Do you get it's just God? Do you get sometimes you need that prayer journal to remind yourself of what God has done for you? Yeah, you um you can go through the journal, like I said, you can use your personal devotion so that you can study the word. You can have a personal devotional. There is this app I spoke um this um um, um devotion i spoke about one time when i was talking about my relationship with god um earlier on this channel i think it's called the bible bible i'll write the bible study girls uh, something like that I'll, i can't, i don't know why i can't remember but i know i received their meals for plan for the months do you get i'll write it and link you guys up so you guys can maybe subscribe to their meal and you get their meal through their meal for the month you know um or you use a plan from the bible app 
the Bible app is a great app, and then all you use your church devotional. For us, uh, my church sends us devotional Monday to Saturdays, um, every day for at five a.m. So I'm subscribed to that, and I if I if at all I say I don't want to even read my Bible actively, I will just read that one and then meditate on it. You get what I mean? Learn a new verse every day. Do you get? Um, you need to be intentional about studying the word as it helps. And if it helps, you know, you can also be intentional about learning memory verses. Um, I'm learning to learn memory verses. My goal was, my goal this year is to learn 52 verses, so a verse per week. I'll say I'm slacking a bit, but I'm quite intentional about learning the Bible, learning words. I might not be able to say verbatim, but at least I must be able to have the full context or just say things that when I say it, you can tell, okay, this is where the person got it from or this is where I got it from in the Bible. Do you get what I'm saying? Because it's important why you're learning this, why you're learning the scripture, why you're studying the word is important because um, you don't want to let unclean spirit come into it. Okay, so let me put it like this: it's in the book of Matthew. I can't remember, but I wrote it down. I'm like, it is better for for the unclean spirit that is looking for where to rest to so meet the place empty, sweet, and put in order, and to so ensure that that the house is put in order. Yeah. Is to ensure that the word of God dwells inside of you. So sometimes when the devil comes to attack you, you just the Holy Spirit will just help you bring out a verse that you study in your inner man and like attack the Holy and give give it to the devil back. You can't come at, you can't come to my house and terrorize me. Do you get what I'm saying? You give it back. You give me buzzwords. I answer you. You get what I mean? And yeah. Also studying the word helps you pray in the right direction as it helps you check your motive and it also helps you to pray in alignment of God's will for your life. I hope with this full point of mine I've been able to um step something inside of you to be able to be consistent with God. Note, please I am not a perfect Christian. I am a work in progress. So sometimes you can see me um I can make a mistake but I am quick to repent because I am very certain that the Holy Spirit convicts me. So please this is not a judging zone. Don't come to my channel and come and be judging me when you see something that do, probably does not align with you my own work with god is different what i am just telling you here is you can these are the ways you can be consistent with god so yeah i hope this video helps and i'll see you guys in my next video i love you